All right, guys, so it says a 67-year-old man was diagnosed with Parkinson's eight years ago. His wife has noticed progressive motor and speech concerns. He has had worsening motor features that include bradykinesia, resting tremor, and rigidity. He has developed difficulty in speech for the past two years. He has difficulty completing sentences and will pause in between his words. He appears to try with great effort to communicate a simple sentence. There is also a significant level of inattention, nervousness, and irritability noted. What would be expected to be seen in, uh, on neuroimaging? So, guys, this is just a kind of a, a, a basics, and you, and you got to start here with, they're going to ask you something like this on the step exam. It's almost like a guarantee. So, you just start with this. Understand, here we go, we got the brain, right? And for now, I just want you to know, uh, obviously, you know the, these areas. You got the temporal, you got the parietal, and then uh, you got the frontal lobe, okay? So what are the basics of these? Well, we know that the temporal lobe, okay, the temporal lobe, you gotta know some, some things that if you are on the left side, okay, if you're on the left side of the temporal lobe, it's kind of like what we're looking at here, that's when you gotta start dealing with uh, wernickes, okay? So on the left side, you can have, and if you have an injury, you can have wernickes aphasia, uh, aphasia. That's also known as receptive aphasia. Remember, it's like it's the information coming in that they can't process. So when it comes to the speech portion of this, uh, which is Broca's, okay, this, that if it's a damage to Wernicke's, the information coming in is kind of damaged, but the speech is good. So it's kind of like just, well, it's like, man, I, I just can't make sense of what you're saying here. It doesn't make any sense, even though they can articulate it. Um, when I say articulate it, they can say it, but it just doesn't make sense because they're ha having trouble with the interpretation aspect. That's damage to Wernicke's area, which is in the temporal lobe. So again, uh, you can, on the damage to the left side, you got Wernicke's aphasia. Uh, you, on the temporal lobe, you can also have temporal lobe uh, epilepsy. Okay, temporal lobe epilepsy. Sometimes you'll, if someone has, remember HSV, this affects the temporal lobe, temporal lobe atrophy. You can have temporal lobe epilepsy. And the temporal lobe is a lot of, it's a lot of sensory information more than motor. And so if someone has a temporal lobe epilepsy, it's not so much that you get the, a lot of the shaking uh, because it's more of a, 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 a sensory area. But you can have issues with those sensory um, elements, such as uh, difficulty with uh, smell, uh, uh, taste, and they, people can have those deja vu uh, moments, okay? So anyways, that's associated with the temporal lobe epilepsy. Again, we're just talking about the temporal lobe here. And then if it was on the right side, right side temporal lobe, some basics are just the, uh, the difficulty recognizing uh, faces, okay? And that the fancy word for that is the uh, prosopagnosia. Uh, something like that. Anyways, um, so yeah, anyway, I probably, probably got that wrong. But anyways, long story short, difficulty recognizing faces is on the right right side of the temporal lobe. Left side, I want you to think issues with the receptive, receptive speech. And then just in general, temporal lobe epilepsy is more sensory. You can have issues with smell, taste, have the deja vu moment. And it's also associated temporal lobe uh, atrophy with uh, uh, HSV. Okay. Now, when it comes to the uh, frontal lobe, okay, that's going to be your attention, uh, you know, kind of problem solving, right? Uh, personality changes, okay? Uh, drastic, you know, like, yeah, just personality changes. Uh, memory as well. Kind of like, kind of more like that higher order thinking kind of level stuff. So that's the frontal lobe. Uh, parietal, you know, I don't get too excited about this per se, not a, not a lot, a lot of questions, more, they like to test more on these other two, but you still got another parietal just in case, and basically you're just kind of a decrease in sensations and uh, perceptions. Uh, you know, like, let's just say numbness, like you have trouble with the numbness and the burning sensations, okay? And then uh, you can have writing issues, math, and stuff like that, okay? So where's really your take on point? What you know? What would I, what would I leave this video making sure that I knew 100%? I would have it memorized. Okay, temporal lobe. We got Wernicke's. 
uh, receptive aphasia, HSV, temporal of epilepsy, smell, taste issues, right side of temporal, I'm thinking I can't recognize faces. On the frontal, the frontal lobe injury, attention, problem solving, higher order kind of stuff, as well as memory. So, but then it comes back to, and then remember, Broca's area is going to be in that uh, frontal lobe portion, and then that's going to be your ability to, to actually make the speech, okay? Uh, so if you have an I issue here of some type, you know, you're going to understand, you know, the information is going to come in, right? It's going to come in okay, but you just can't articulate it. You know, you're going to show a level of frustration at the issues with Broca's area. Now, there's one point, and, and this is going to be your take-home point for this video as well. The insula or insular area, okay? And you're like, oh, I never heard of it. You know, I might have heard of it. I don't know where it's at. If you see these, like the, the the separation between the temporal and the frontal and stuff like that, these these fissures or these we call them grooves or whatnot, but these fissures. If I were to take that and pull it apart, right? If I was to separate those two and dig a little bit deeper, what's that next layer underneath these guys? Okay, now I'm kind of underneath it. If I were to pull these guys apart. That's going to be my my insula, okay, or my insular area. So you can see it kind of overlaps both, for the most part, both areas there. Um, but that's where you're going to get this uh, insular uh, when when you see these these questions on that, and it's just underneath. So back to this question. Now that we have this basics of neuro, is 67 year old man diagnosed with Parkinson's eight years ago. His uh, wife has noticed progressive motor and speech concerns, okay? Motor and speech, so we're, we're kind of probably in, in, in this area somewhere, okay? He has worsening motor features, including bradykinesia, resting tremor, and rigidity. He has difficulty in speech for the past two years. He has difficulty completing sentences and will pause in, be in between his words. What do you think he's doing? Is he having trouble actually understanding what's coming in, or is he showing a little bit of frustration about what's going out? right he appeared that's the real question you're asking yourself right now because it's going to tell you are you here or are you here he appears to try with great effort to communicate a simple sentence right he's trying he wants to he's frustrated inside just can't communicate it so where is he at he's more right here okay he's more right there there is also a significant level in attention nervousness and irritability well that sounds more frontal lobe stuff right so we know that we're dealing with this area right in through here right now. What would be the expected to be seen on neuroimaging? All right, well, we're kind of in the ballpark. Well, first of all, are we on the left side or right side? Anytime you're dealing with the speech stuff, you're going to be on the left, okay? For the most, just, just think of it like that. So I'm automatically kind of going in here and eliminate my choices that are to deal with the right side. So now is it left temporal atrophy or left frontoinsular atrophy? Well, if it was just temporal lobe, we wouldn't be having, you know, I'm, not, I'm having more of these type of symptoms, okay, uh, in addition to that frustration of putting the words out, than I am with the uh, receptive piece of it. So I don't feel, you know, they always want you to bite on A because it looks good, right? You're thinking, oh, temporal, it's got to be some Wernicke's Broca issue, okay. Um, but again, if it was just temporal, I wouldn't be having all these type of symptoms. Left frontoinsular atrophy, you know, it's un right underneath, right underneath these er this area. And so you'll get both of those. So the correct answer on this one's going to be C. But again, guys, go back, understand just the basics for this video. Temporal lobe injury, you better be thinking this stuff. Frontal lobe injury, think here. Better know Wernicke's, uh, Wernicke's uh, and Broca's. And then, um, you know, know that that insular, insular area is just going to be right underneath where you pull those two apart right where they join. Um, it can, and it can have an effect uh, for this. Okay? Hope it was helpful, guys.